Welcome to another HSB session, Human and Social Biology. Today we'll be looking at the excretory system under the topic excretion and homeostasis. So we're looking at excretion and homeostasis. Through this video, we are going to cover what homeostasis is. We will look at the role of the kidneys in excretion and then we will pick up in part two on different types of regulation that occurs in the body as it relates to blood glucose, temperature and water content of the blood. So excretion first and foremost must be differentiated from what it is commonly mixed up with. It is normally confused with the topic of ejection. So excretion is totally different from ejection. Ejection is the removal of undigested food while excretion is the removal of waste from the body that was produced when the body goes under or takes on chemical reactions. So excretion is a result of chemical reactions. The body gets rid of waste from chemical reactions while ejection is just get, getting rid of food that was not digested. So you pass feces, that is ejection. You pass urine, as we will see throughout this video, that, come under, that comes under excretion. Now, homeostasis might seem like a big word, but it simply means that our body tries to maintain a stable condition, a constant condition throughout. So as it relates to temperature, we do not want to be too cold and we do not want to be too warm. As it relates to water in the body, you don't want too much water and you don't want too little. So the body tries to maintain a balance. So homeostasis is about a balance of body conditions, a balance of our body conditions. So as we have looked at excretion, we will now go on to look at different factors or different types of reactions that take place that result in waste being formed that would require the body to undergo excretion. So firstly, we will look at the kidneys and the role of the kidney in excretion. As you would know, we have two kidneys and based on this diagram, you can see the location of the kidney. It is toward the back of the body, closer toward the back at the lower portion of the abdomen. So towards your lower back. That is why oftentimes when you have lower back pain, it could be a sign of kidney problems. So one on the left, one on the right, and the feed into what is called the ureter, ureter, and that's different from the urethra, which is what leads from the bladder to the outside world. So the kidney feeds into the ureter, which fills up the bladder. That's the storage place for urine, and then urine is passed when the bladder is full from the bladder to the ureter and out of our body. Uh, so that's for the location of the kidneys. As it relates to the structure of the kidney, if you should cut a kidney now, a cross section of the kidney, this is what it would look like on the inside. This is a very simplified diagram, but this is, gets the basic idea of what it looks like inside. So you realize there are two shades in this diagram, light pink and dark pink, that represents two different sections of the kidney. And there are a lot of labelings here, but we just want to focus on these two sections. The outer section is called the cortex, and cortex in many cases, in plants, in animals, in biology in general, refers to a uh, outer section. So think of the cortex of a plant, it's the outer layers. So if you think of the cortex of the kidney, it is also the outer section of the kidney. Outer meaning if you should cut it into the section that is closer to the edges or to the outer membrane of the kidney. On the inside now we have what is called the medulla. 
So the medulla is the darker section and it is in real life literally darker than the cortex. Uh, stretching across the cortex and the medulla we have small units that really do the work in the kidneys. So we think of the kidney and we think of the fact that it gets rid of excess water and it gets rid of waste and it purifies the blood so that it gets rid of all the unnecessary things and that is expelled through urine. But when we think about it, it is not one big unit that is doing everything. The work is done in small units called nephrons. And a nephron looks like this right here. This is the brown section that you're looking at right now that is a nephron. Now there are thousands of nephrons in each kidney. Remember we are just looking at one right now. So in each kidney you have thousands of these repeated, stretched out across. This is only showing one, but you would have several of them along this area in the kidney. And this is really magnified so that you can really see what is happening. So it wouldn't be this large. But it would still stretch from the cortex and down into the medulla. So now that we know what inside the kidney looks like and what the units are, which are the nephrons, the nephrons take care of the purification of the blood and maintaining the balance of substances in the blood. So let us look now at closer at the nephron to better understand how the nephron works. All right, this diagram might seem a bit complex but if you follow the process closely, you will get an understanding of what is going on. So remember, we looked at the kidney and we said that there are thousands of nephrons arranged along the cortex and the medulla of the kidney. So if you look at this diagram, this broken line would represent the barrier between the cortex and the medulla. This section would be the cortex. And then this section down here would be the medulla. So all of this right here is in the medulla. And all of this right here is in the cortex of the kidney. Right. So let's look at each part. Starting at the glomerulus, this is a bundle of blood vessels. You can see that blood would enter from this section and it goes into the glomerulus which is a bundle of blood vessels. They are smaller than the vessel that leads up to the glomerulus and it is smaller than the vessel that leaves the, gl the glomerulus. So this bundle right here is the starting of the nephron inside of the Bowman's capsule, we have the glomerulus. So the Bowman's cap capsule sorry, is that cup-shaped structure of the nephron that surrounds the glomerulus. And we will see why it surrounds the glomerulus shortly. So blood enters into the glomerulus and because the vessels or the parts of the glomerulus are so small, the tubules are so small, and blood is entering by pressure, Obviously, if you have a larger vessel leading into smaller vessels, you will have a lot of pressure being built up. Just think of a large hose, a hose or a large pipe, the main pipe leading into smaller pipes. You will have larger pressure, heavier pressure. So blood is forced into the glomerulus on a high pressure, and we call that ultra filtration, ultra meaning high high filtration, high pressure filtration. So because of the high pressure, some substances are forced out. They are in this tiny vessel, these tiny vessels. The pressure is so high, they are forced out of the, the blood vessels. So we will remember from the study of the circulatory system that there are several things contained in blood. Some of the things that would pass out are the smaller things, obviously. You wouldn't expect the large things to pass out so easily. The smaller things would pass through the walls of these blood vessels and over into the Bowman's capsule. So this is how filtration of the blood starts. So you can think of some of the smaller things in 
blood such as glucose you would also have your amino acids small protein uh, molecules you have hormones vitamins and of course water is going to pass over into the Bowman's capsule you also have salts and urea when we talk of urea this is the this is the result of the breakdown of proteins in the liver and of course it is transported in the body through the blood because we know the blood carries both waste and useful products the urea ends up in the kidneys eventually and in the process of filtration urea is transferred from the blood vessels over into the nephron all right so these substances glucose amino acids hormones vitamins water salt all of these pass over into the bowman's capsule and as a result what remains you can guess is blood vessels such as white, uh, not blood vessels blood cells such as white blood cells red blood cells of course platelets and other plasma proteins remain in the blood vessels and you realize then that the blood vessel leads from the glomerulus and continues to surround the nephron as it continues down the line so it continues to wrap around the nephrons the nephron sorry as it continues down the line now this section is called the proximal convoluting tubule this section is called the distal convoluting tubule convoluted means that it is winding and twisted so you can see both of these sections are twisted and winding the speaking of the nephron the gold section you have the distal convoluted tubule and the proximal distal means it's far away as in distance so it's far away from the beginning of the nephron and proximal in close proximity it means that it is closer to the beginning all right so we understand now that these substances urea salts water vitamins hormones amino acids glucose would be in the nephron while in the blood vessels we would only have the blood cells and plasma proteins as they continue down realize that these filter this filtrate the result of the ultra filtration would be passing in the nephron continuing down the line so it passes through the proximal convoluted tubule and in the proximal convoluted tubule there is selective reabsorption which means some things are passed back from the nephron and into the blood vessels some of the things that would pass over would be amino acids and hormones and vitamins and glucose so they would have passed back into the blood vessels you notice that urea is not passed back because it's a waste substance you don't want it to go back into the blood vessels some amount of water now when it comes to water water is mainly reabsorbed through the the loop of Enli. this is that section right here that this curved section right here is called the loop of Enli, and in the medulla it is very salty which causes water to be pulled from the nephron and back into the blood vessels so water is pulled from the nephron and back into the blood vessels because of the high concentration of salts in the medulla the salt pulls the water back into the blood vessels then we enter the distal convoluted tubule and this is like where things finally wrap up so there is more absorption of salts which pass back into the blood vessels and also a little bit of water is also reabsorbed in the distal convoluted tubule at this point excess water and urea is passed out and some salts passed out into this section which is called the collecting duct which collects as the name suggests the 
filtrate, the final part of the filtrate. By this time it is called urine because it would have been purified and the waste substances alone remain.